So the next talk is a state recovery attack on the modified Kitchen by uh, Thomas Fuhr, Maria Maya Placentia, and Jan Rotea, and uh, Thomas will give it. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So the topic of my talk will be uh, the uh, attacks on uh, the CISA candidate uh, Ketje. Uh, so Ketje is a family of authenticated encryption algorithms with associated data. Uh, it is uh, currently a candidate in the third round of the CISA competition. Uh, it was designed uh, by Bertoni, Demon, Peters, Von Ash, and Von Kerr. Um, and um, there have been two <coughs> versions uh, of the, the algorithm. So the first version was initially submitted in 2014 to the competition, and the second version was released at the beginning of the third round with a small modification, uh, which we'll see later. So currently there are four instances of uh, Ketia, uh, which uh, uh, depend on the size of the internal state. Uh, Ketia Junior, Senior, Ketia Minor, and Ketia Major. And in this talk, I will focus on the smallest version. So here is uh, the mode of operation of uh, Ketia. It is based on the monkey perplex mode, uh, by this, basically the, the, the same team uh, as um, the Ketia um, encryption algorithm. Uh, it relies on the Ketia permutation on a smaller state of uh, 200 bits. Uh, and the claim security level is uh, 96 bits. So basically, how does it work? Uh, the the 200 bit state is uh, divided into two parts. Uh, the first is a, uh, on the 16 bits, which is a rate, and the, the remaining part of the state is called the capacity. So after an initialization step, uh, the associated data are processed. Then uh, the main topic of my talk will be the message processing step, which consists in applying one round of a permutation uh, of the catch-up permutation, then uh, adding the message, uh, the message block, the 16-bit message block to the state, outputting the ciphertext block, and, and uh, so on, iteratively doing that for all message blocks, and then there is a tag extraction step, step uh, which uh, will not be relevant for my talk. Uh, so let's uh, notice that during the message processing phase, uh, only one round of the catch-up permutation is applied uh, between each uh, uh, ciphertext uh, output. Uh, and therefore, <coughs> um, there, it's completely irrelevant to try to attack round reduced versions of, uh, of this algorithm. So what we did and what was uh, advised um, by the designers as part of the catch group that is contest was to try to increase the rate, so a bit more bits uh, for each block. Um, so uh, I want to, to say that uh, our paper is, to our knowledge, the first analysis of the message processing phase of the, of the algorithm. And we have the following results. So for uh, the first version of Arcadia, we can uh, attack with uh, rates uh, 32 or 40. And uh, for the second version, uh, we need to have a rate of 40 to be able to, to mount our attack. And so it's basically a state recovery attack. We recover the state during the message processing phase. Uh, and once the state is recovered, it's trivial to get the key by uh, computing all the operations in, in the reverse order. Uh, the related works, uh, some, some works are, are related to, to, our, uh, to our attacks. Uh, so first, uh, as uh, um, Ketia is based on the Ketchup permutation, uh, there has been a lot of, of analysis of this permutation, especially during the Shard 3 competitions. Uh, but for the specific case of Ketia, uh, most of the uh, available analysis uh, are on the initialization phase, uh, the initialization step. So basically, there are cube attacks and there are linearization attacks. And I also want to to uh, underline that our attack uh, is no threat for uh, the recommended set of parameters of Ketio. Uh, so first, how does uh, Ketio Junior work? So first, as I said, uh, there is a 200-bit state, which is uh, seen as a 5 by 5 by 8 three-dimensional array. So we have this array uh, here. Uh, so here you, you have 5 bits, 5 bits in the columns, 5 bits in the rows, and 8 bits in the third dimension. 
It is based on um, one round of the uh, catch-up permutation with elementary operations are uh, theta, rho, pi, chi, and yota. I will describe them later. Uh, and so we have the following structures. When we output uh, three message blocks, when we deal with three message blocks uh, with uh, um, KTO Jr. version 1, uh, which is, sorry, here. Um, so uh, we have two consecutive rounds with theta, rho, pi, chi message addition. Uh, and uh, when we add the message, we output uh, here um, um, rows uh, 40 bits. We have a rate of 40 but output bits in each row. Um, okay. So now let's focus on the operation of uh, uh, KTM. So um, first of all, we have the linear diffusion, uh, which is provided by operation theta. Uh, which relies on the use of parity bits. So what are the parity bits? So for uh, the parity bits are the sum of all the five bits of a given column. So here you have an example. Um, uh, you have the, the sum of uh, how we represent them in, in, in our uh, notation. Uh, we have the sum of these five bits uh, there. Uh, and each bit after theta is computed as a sum of the bit of the same position before theta and two parity bits from two different slices here uh, of the state. Then we have uh, row and pi, which are only bit shuffling operations. We do not describe them in detail. Uh, and then we have the nonlinear layer chi, uh, which is a substitution layer that works row wise. Uh, it is um, an S box with a 5 bit S box uh, with an algebraic degree 2, uh, and each output bit is computed as a function of 3 input bits, so it's the same as you have in chart 3. Um, so the, the output bit here is computed as a function of the 3 bits there, and so on. Uh, the, bit, the red bit here is computed as a function of only 3 input bits, so that will be. Uh, uh, we will look at the future in our talks. Then uh, there is uh, the yoga function, which is basically an addition of uh, one constant, and uh, which uh, is omitted in the following description. So uh, our attacks are based on uh, divide and conquer strategy. So let's recall the, the following uh, problem, which is a follow parallel problem in cryptography and cryptanalysis. We uh, aim at solving a Boolean system of equations. So the general problem is uh, you want to find what the solutions uv to uh, where u is a uv variable and v a uv variables, such as a function of uv <coughs> is zero. So basically what you can do is, uh, when for the general problem is an exhaustive search, which complexity is 2 to the n u plus n v. And we focus on the subcase where uh, you can write f of uv as uh, separate, as a sum of separate um, dependencies in u and v. And then the equations become f u of u um, equals f u of v. So some function of u equals some function of v. And this, uh, it can be, it's for, for current for truth analysis that it can be solved by a uh, basic divide and conquer technique. So how do you do that? Uh, you compute f of u for all u and give the sorted list according to f u of u. You use the, the same for v and then you search for matches in those lists. The complexity is 2 to the n u plus 2 to the n v minus the number of solutions you need to to uh, plus sorry the number of solutions you need to add. So how does it do our attacks work? Um, so first of all we can notice that uh, as uh, we target the 96 uh, bit security level and the state is 2 to the hundred um, <coughs> we need at least 2 to the minus 96 uh, divided by r, plate x block, so that we have um, that number times r uh, available uh, bits of inf information on the state to be able to recover the state uh, in less than uh, 2 to the 96 operations. So that uh, sets the number of blocks that we need to focus on. <coughs> and the core of uh, our attack is that divide and conquer technique. So we want to exp express 
all the values that we know as, or at most, as many values, these values that we know, know as uh, separate um, expressions in some value u and some value v. Uh, to achieve it, we might have to uh, use a guess and determine technique, so to, to guess uh, some bits of the state before starting our uh, divide and conquer attack. And then in the last attack that I will present, uh, we will also use the, some partial inversion of S box, so some special property that we have when we know um, when we partially know the output of an S box. So let's come back to uh, three consecutive outputs of uh, Ketia Junior uh, version one with a rate of 40. So uh, um, yeah, we know uh, 40 bits here, 40 bits there, and 40 bits there in the uh, block. So first, what we can do is, as chi works row-wise, to invert chi here, the partially, to that we know 40 bits here of the one, and then we can also invert row and pi, which are bit shuffling operations. Then what we do is uh, guess the state by halves. So the first four slices of the state uh, are u is the, uh, the first four slices of the state plus some parity bits. Here, the five parity bits of the last slice, and v is the, la the back uh, half of the state plus also parity bits. So when we do that, do that so uh, separating the slices uh, enables us to compute backwards through chi as chi works uh, with rows, and then rho and pi. And guessing the parity bits here enables us to compute um, half of the state after theta for both guesses u and v. Uh, <coughs> then uh, we can use uh, the, the fact that theta, uh, the inverse of theta is linear, so that we can express the bits here as um, some function of the green bits plus some function of the red bits. So we can use these 40 bits to see. It. And the size of the list, so sorry, the number of bits we have to guess is the half of the state, which is 100, 5 parity bits, minus the 20 bits here uh, for the four slices that we already know, and also minus the, the, the 20 bits uh, in purple that we also know from the inversion of uh, the last one. Okay, so the complexity is well, 2 to the 66 for the beginning of the list, and uh, 2 to the 80 as uh, we can use uh, every, uh, all the 120 bits here of information that we have. Uh, then, uh, how does it work on uh, the second version of uh, Ketiak Jr., also with the rate of 40? So the difference between both versions of Ketiak is uh, how you output uh, the key stream. Uh, so for Ketiak Jr. version 1, the, the key stream is output um, uh, by rows, so you have 8 rows. Here you have 8 diagonals, 1 per slice. And so, uh, the problem for our previous attack is that we cannot no longer uh, invert the chi layer here, so we have to do something else. So basically, we start our, the beginning of our attack is, is the same. We, the, the u and v sets are the same, so we guess all the bits here. We can compute backwards and uh, also see through um, the inverse of theta, and we compute forwards up to the value here, z1. After, after the pipe. And then uh, we need to use this information here uh, to be able to see uh, the solutions. So how do we do that? Uh, so we look at each bit of, uh, each known bit of x2 here, and it, as if you remember how the chi layer works, each of the bits depends on three input bits here uh, at these positions. And for three input bits, you have some of them belong to u, some of them belong to v. Uh, and uh, what we do basically is that we, get, before starting the dependent concrete phase, we guess the bit that is <coughs> potentially non -mean. So here uh, we guess the orange bit, and here, so the first bit only depends now on green bits, the second bit also depends on green bits, and the third on red bits. So, so this enables us, during, uh, during this preliminary guesses, to see them through the nonlinear layer. And the complexity is about to be 82, because you have 105 bits here that, uh, that you guess, you know 20 bits here, 
you know 16 bits that have, uh, have been guessed preliminary, uh, and uh, you have 20 bits here, uh, in purple here that you compute while uh, computing the, the list of value for your and bits. Okay. Next, uh, we can for criteria question one, we can add one block to our attack. So here you have the, our previous attack uh, up to there uh, in a compressed representation, and then we add one more, so we can still uh, compute backwards the known information up to up to here. And then we need to get sibling relations between uh, known guest values of the Z Z1 and known values of Y2. So we have a chi function here and a theta function here between them. So how do we do, we do that? We combine two ideas. First, we get some bits here in a range uh, that enables us to reduce the number of um, uh, problems uh, through the chi layer. So when the problem arises, when we have two consecutive bits, uh, which belong to one of belongs to U and the other belongs to V. Why? Because through chi, these bits are combined through uh, a logical N, and then uh, this prevents us from uh, expressing the output of chi as a function of U plus a function of V. So we do some preliminary guesses, but th this is not enough. We also need to consider uh, not uh, directly this, sorry, directly these bit values, but linear combinations of them. And this enables us to attack this version in uh, 2 to the 72 uh, operations. So we do not, we cannot make use of all the 40 bits known bits here. We only make use of uh, 10 linear combinations of them. So in the end, we are left with 2 to the 70 solutions uh, that we need to, to uh, search um, a space of 2 to the 70 solutions that we need to search. And uh, finally, we can also um, apply our attack when the rate is decreased to 32. So how does it work? Basically, when the rate is decreased to 32, uh, we lose the information, we lose one bit of information per row here, there, there, and there. So here, the bit of information we lose, we just have to, uh, to insert in it in U and V. It's, it's a part of U and a part of V for the last four slices. Here, uh, on X2, we guess uh, those bits as preliminary guesses, so we have a factor of 2 to 8. Uh, here, we just lose some simulation, so we, have, we are left with more solutions at the end of the algorithm, but there is no, nothing really complicated to, uh, to adapt the attack. And <clears throat> the most tricky part is for the last uh, output block here, uh, what we can notice is that we have four bits that are known at the output of uh, some S boxes after the chi layer. So basically, each input can be ex expressed as a linear function of the, rem the remaining bits. So we have five linear functions here of the remaining bits. And so we have four linear com combinations that we know, uh, for which we know the value here. Uh, by, um, independently of the last bit. Okay? Uh, so we have, for each S box, we have four linear combination independent, and then for the eight S boxes, we have 32 independent linear combinations. So we do some, also some preliminary guesses here of bits in orange. We do 20 uh, guesses, and then we get 20 linear combinations here from uh, the, the, the preliminary guesses, and we also get uh, 32 uh, uh, subspace of dimension 32 for the conditions that we know. So the intersection of these spaces uh, gives that we have 12 linear conditions uh, uh, that we know both from here and there, and that gives us uh, 12 uh, sealing relations. So, uh, this enables us to get a complexity below uh, the generic, uh, uh, below the claim security for, for this algorithm. So, to conclude my talk, uh, our attack is the first on the message processing part of KTM, 
But uh, we have to emphasize that it does not pose any threat to uh, the catcher with the recommended parameters of a rate of 16. And also that uh, it emphasizes that the modification between both versions of catcher uh, increases the security as we can uh, perform more powerful attack against the first version than on the second version. So thank you for your attention. So we have time for a few questions. So maybe a quick one. So you mentioned the change between version one and version two increase the security. Yeah. So it's just the way you extract the bits that changes, right? Yes. So what if you try different ways to extracting the bits? Are there better ways or worse ways? Or? So uh, I would say that the initial version is uh, it's quite straightforward to, to try that, but it's not a good idea because uh, it has the same structure as uh, the Xbox layer. And so, bits that are extracted at the same time come from the, the output of the same Xbox, and then you can get some information uh, on the input of the Xbox more easily. And in the second version, you avoid that by outputting uh, the diagonal, diagonals. Uh, which uh, makes it um, more difficult for the other side. Okay, thank you. Let's have a speaker again.